Hello, I'm a VX Toy Cat, and welcome back to the video. Today we talk about fossils in Minecraft, because as a lot of you are probably aware, they came into the game with the most recent console update. However, the question a lot of people aren't aware about is exactly how you find these fossils. So today, I figured I'd show you not only how to find fossils in Minecraft, but also the best way of finding fossils. And hopefully you all do enjoy today's video, showing you how to do that stuff. If you do all like it, like the video and let me know, because it helps out the channel a lot, and let's know you do like tutorials, like, again, how to find the fossils and stuff. So let's start with the most basic stuff you need to know, which is the fact that fossils will only generate below desert deserts and swamps. So you need a desert biome or a swamp biome or any variant thereof. So a desert hill biome like out over there, you could find a fossil below that or a swamp hill. Any variant of those two biomes are the only ones you can find fossils below. So yeah, that's the easiest thing. Make sure you start in a desert or swamp. If you haven't been doing that so far, then you've had 0% chance. However, if you have been finding deserts or swamps and you knew that bit, uh, then you might be like, okay, well the best strategy is just to dig down randomly and hope we run into a fossil, which I mean, oh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I guess it can technically work, you know, every now and then, but you have about a one in 2000 chance of this actually working because only one in every 64 chunks actually contains a fossil at all. So yeah, basically digging down just randomly and hoping you run into a fossil. I mean, I ran into a cave, which is pretty rare. It's something you can do, but it's not necessarily the best strategy in the world. So what is a better strategy than just randomly digging down? If it's just a random, massively rare chance, how am I going to improve those odds? Well, I think the best way and uh, the way that has given me the best success so far is actually to look for surface caves. So surface caves are something that have existed in Minecraft for quite some time, but most people don't really use because they only let you find, you know, coal and iron and if people do use them it's usually just you know for a few seconds at the start but yeah these surface caves are really great because not only you know the opportunity to explore so many chunks at once like look how much area i'm looking around and looking for you know fossils in not is it an opportunity to see so much stuff at once but i'm getting out there because it's very dangerous uh but also because uh, one of the reasons you might want fossils is because they have a lot of coal ore it means that you can kind of uh, you know get an advantage on that because instead of just um you know, uh, you can actually find coal ore while looking for the fossils. So it means that, yeah, you can find coal while looking for coal, which is nice. But also you find iron. And also you're just exploring way more chunks way faster than if you were just digging down. So, yeah, find surface caves. Uh, that was one just there, which is in a really lucky village. I will be showing this uh, village off. Uh, sorry, the seed off uh, later today if you do want to check it out. But just look anywhere inside a desert or a swamp for a surface cave. And then check that out. And you have a, you know, a slightly above average. Again, you have to check a lot of them. Chance of just randomly finding a fossil. Like, I could just randomly find one at the edge of the end of this. I mean, I probably won't. But still, it's something that could happen at any time, and it's a pretty cool little thing. So yeah, check your surface caves, um, and make sure you don't go too deep down, because uh, the second most important criteria is the fact that fossils only generate at kind of near surface levels. They only generate about 24 blocks below the ground or, or less, and that means that, you know, if we have, uh, let's check our map for instance, as you can see, we're at Y71 right now. That means anything above Y55 is just, or Y57 I think it might be, uh, would not have any fossils. So make sure you stay somewhere near the surface. Again, anything above, like, you know, Y, uh, you know, 40 is generally a good idea, but in this case, you know, why, uh, sorry, yeah, why 47, I guess. Anything above why 47 is going to be a good idea. Just in general, try and stay in that right area and you'll do pretty well. So yeah, dig down randomly is just a, you know, it's a poor strategy, but you might eventually do it with about 2,000 attempts or so. Um, but if you want to improve your odds even better than just going into caves, then what I think is the best strategy is to try and find ravines, abandoned mine shafts, anything like that at the subsurface layers of these biomes. So again, that requires a lot of luck because finding a structure is some amount of luck in that. But yeah, that's just um you know let's let's go to one that i think i found earlier if i can actually find it in time because if we just dig down here again i hope this leads to the right place boom we find ourselves in a ravine and because the ravine is uh, uh, just the right layer so let's knock this zombie up first the arena's at just the right layer, where it's just around where fossils can spawn, anywhere above here. We can check so much ground at once, and if it was higher, we could check this whole thing for fossils. So, basically, it's an opportunity to explore so much more ground at once than you ever would otherwise, and, uh, yeah, you improve your odds from being, like, let's say, 1 in 2,000 from a random dig, to maybe something like, you know, 1 in, uh, let's make up an entirely random number, 1 in, like, you know, 60, or 1 in, like, 100, because you're exploring so many chunks at once. And, just like that, the first time I went into this particular ravine, I did find myself a fossil Fossil. It was a really low down fossils and it's actually ribs. Uh, so yeah, once you've found your fossils and you're like, yeah, I've done it, you might want to excavate it. So this is like the next step there because, you know, now you've found your fossils, you know the best technique is just to find a big open area. Generally, a ravine is the best one. And uh, But what, what about after that? Well, you can uh, excavate the thing and it's really cool to look at these because not all of the structure is bone, like you might think. Some of it's actually made from coal ore because, you know, it's it's been uh, in the ground so long, I guess it degenerated all the way into coal. Again, kind of a cool little fact. Uh, and some of it's just turned into stone entirely, which means that when you do mine the whole thing, you get this just really cool thing left behind. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to show you after I've uh, you know done all the mining for this what exactly it looks like because it's so cool to me the fact that you just see random bone fragments and then you're like aha you know you got to kind of look onto that and uh, then once you spend a little bit of time mining you get this really cool success feeling. So let me show you exactly what it looks like when you're done mining. 
Okay, so that actually took a lot longer than I thought it did. It's like one of those uh, kits where you have, like, the dinosaurs buried in the, the sand and you chip it away. And it was, like, really addicting in that way. But, yeah, I really I, I enjoyed bur- uh, excavating my first little fossil. And here you can now see it uh, mostly uh, kind of uncovered. Because it's in a ravine, it's, like, really tricky to properly do. But, yeah, I, uh, this this is one of the other cool benefits. You get a really interesting challenge of trying to uncover this whole thing. And a part of me now wants to be like, well... How about I mine away the coal? Which, again, like I said, some of it actually turns into coal. But why don't I mine away the coal and, like, finish it up and put the rest of the bones in? I don't know. There's something really, really cool about finding these things. I don't know how they, you know, kind of mastered that discovery factor. But to me, at least, these are a perfect little structure to find. Because they're rare enough that, you know, like, you're not going to just bump into them by accident. But when you do find one, you know, it's something you can either ignore... You can just take resources from, or you can treat it like a fun little project. And that's what I absolutely love about the fossils. That's how you find fossils. That's what they do. And this is what they look like when they're finished. So yeah, hopefully you learned something from today's video, or maybe you just uh, enjoyed seeing a rib cage be uncovered. Bear in mind, there's eight different ones of these. So if you want to be like a completionist, there's eight of these to be found. You're probably not going to have all eight on a single console-sized world, but maybe you can believe in that. Um, and maybe you want to just uh, build them yourself. But anyway, for now, uh, there are eight different types of these, four different rib cages and four different skulls. If you find all eight, I guess you've done something cool. And um, if you want to find them, look around open spaces because it's really important. So thank you all very much for watching. Like it if you liked it, share if you really liked it, and subscribe if you're new around here. I'm going to be covering the sea later on today because you might have spotted earlier the stronghold is in this same ravine as the fossils as well as uh, four savannah villages. It's a really nice seed. And yeah, I'll be showing it later on Seed Sunday, so make sure you check in for that. So goodbye, everyone. Thank you.